Are you a father representing yourself in a children's case? Are you trying to convince the court that you should be having contact with your child or even shared care of the child? Well, if you are, then this video is for you. Hi, my name's Tracy Maloney, AKA the legal queen on social media. And I thought it'd be really useful if I did a video for all the dads out there looking to get contact with their children, perhaps shared care with their children, but who are representing themselves. I see fathers all the time in the courtroom who have the best intentions, but the way they present their argument is letting them down. So here's some useful tips that's really gonna help you win your case. First tip I would say is make sure that you are actively involved in your children's education, even if your children are at nursery. What you are trying to demonstrate to the court is that you're all over it essentially. So be involved with your children's teachers or the nursery staff if they're still at nursery. You can demonstrate this by keeping emails that you've sent to nursery or the school and the emails that you've received back. What you're trying to demonstrate is that while you may not be the main carer of your children, that you are actively involved in their education. You are routinely emailing the school for updates. You're on the school's list for the newsletter. You participate in sports days. You're fully aware of what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis in your child's life at school. Tip number two, be fully aware of who your child's doctor is, who your child's dentist is, and if your children are on any medication, what that medication is and how often your children are taking it. Sometimes when parents separate, the children do stay with mum. So naturally, mum has all that information to hand. And sometimes dads have to ask mum or find out for themselves what information is pertinent to the child's medical history. Be aware of that. Demonstrate to the court that you know that. This will instill confidence into the court that when the children are in your care, you know exactly what's going on medically in your children's lives. Tip number three. Now this may seem a small point, but be aware of who your children's friends are, particularly if your children are at primary or junior school. Because what you want to demonstrate to the court is that when the children are in your care, you are also going to be able to arrange play dates with them. You're also going to know the parents of your children's friends and therefore are able to take them to birthday parties, etc. Again, when parents separate, generally it's the mum that takes care of all this. What you need to do is make sure that you're all over the social side of your children's lives. Tip four, particularly if you are the one that's left the family home, that your new accommodation is suitable for your children. What I mean by that is make sure that you've got smoke alarms fitted, that you've got adequate security. Make sure that your children, if possible, have got their own bedroom, a nice space in which to be able to do their homework in. What you're trying to demonstrate to the court is, even though you've left the family home, where the children feel safe and secure, that your new accommodation also ticks those boxes. This is gonna really help in your argument. And I raise this tip because a lot of times, especially when I'm representing mothers, their main worry that they will vocalize to the court is that father's accommodation simply isn't suitable for the children. What you might wanna consider is attaching exhibits to your statement in the form of photographs that will clearly show the court just how suitable your new accommodation is for the children. Tip number five, another objection that I hear mothers making all the time is that father isn't aware of the child's dietary requirements, that actually the father is feeding them all kinds of rubbish when the children are with dad. What you want to demonstrate to the court is a sensible meal plan. So if you are planning on asking the court for alternate weekends, perhaps suggest to the court what it is that you're going to be feeding the children. Again, it will just counteract mum's argument that you're not aware of sensible eating patterns. You can demonstrate this really easily to the court by including in your statement what it is that you plan on feeding the children when they're in your care. It also shows the court that you're aware of how important a sensible eating plan is. Tip number six, and this may not be an easy one for some of you, but what I encourage the fathers that I represent to do is to encourage contact when the children are with you to spending time with your ex's family. What can sometimes be forgotten is that grandparents, regardless of whose side they are on, miss out on having time with the children when the parents separate. 
So if you are aware that your children really enjoy spending time with the maternal grandparents, for example, make sure that you allow some time when the children are with you to do that, even though you are allowing your ex's parents to see them on your time. It will go down really well with the court and the CAFCAS as well. And my final tip for all you dads out there representing yourself, show that you are able to communicate with your ex. This can be really difficult, especially where the relationship has broken down badly and there's lots of animosity between you both. What the court's really trying to identify is that the parents are going to be able to co-parent between themselves successfully. You may get your child arrangements order, but that doesn't mean that that's going to assist your relationship with your ex, who, let's face it, is the mother of your children. So be sure to demonstrate to the court that you've looked at parenting apps, WhatsApps, whatever it might be, emails, keep all that evidence. Again, attach it to your statement as exhibits. Demonstrate to the court that as difficult as the relationship is, you're able to put that to one side and communicate with mom in the best interest of the children. And here's a bonus tip. For those of you that may not know, the court's always looking, when it's being asked to make a child arrangements order, what's in the best interest of the child. Now you can download from the government website what we call the welfare checklist. That is the list that the court's going to keep in its mind when deciding this child arrangements application. Download that, have it with you when you attend court. It will keep you focused and keep your argument in line with exactly what the court wants to hear. So that's it. My tips for all you dads out there representing yourself and trying to get contact with your children. And if you're a dad who's representing himself in a children's case, and there's other tips that you can share with other dads, then by all means, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to read them. And guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget, like and subscribe.